We just argued that a lens uh, with one F in front and one F behind is a Fourier transform machine. Um, let's see if that works for the Gaussian beam, which we've already used in exactly that same geometry. So I've uh, painted the intensity of a Gaussian beam here in front of and behind the lens. I used a different color table in front of and behind the lens, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to see any of this at all. It would all be very, very low intensity. Um, and we have a waist at the front focal plane. And of course, we know that that transforms to a new waist at the back focal plane. And I've drawn in the divergence and waist rays here and reminded ourselves uh, of, of that the new waist W0 prime is equal to the focal length of the lens times the initial divergence theta naught right there. Um, so we know that already. Um, we know from uh, Gaussian beam relationships that we could relate the uh, divergence of the Gaussian beam in front of the lens to the waist in front of the lens by lambda over pi w naught. So I just substituted in, substituted in that Gaussian beam expression. So now we know how the waist size behind the lens relates to the initial waist size in front of the lens. Let's see if that works given the, the proposal that this system uh, can also be understood through a Fourier transform. So let's take the electric field in front of the lens, that's just e to the minus x over w naught, that's the initial waist squared. So that's my Gaussian field right along there. And let's take its Fourier transform. Um, and I've dropped all the terms relating to the amplitude because they don't really matter here, I just care about the shape. Um, Gaussian beams or Gaussian functions Fourier transform to Gaussian functions. So uh, the spatial frequency related to this, uh, this space, uh, that transform uh, is here. And notice the units are right. Uh, we have one over distance here and, and w naughts in unit of distance. Um, and uh, so check, that's the Fourier transform of the field along here. To understand how it shows up in the x prime coordinate here, I have to make the scaling, I have to make the substitution. Uh, and that we just saw was that the spatial frequency times f lambda equals x prime, or spatial frequency equals x prime over f lambda. Again, notice that is a quantity if one over distance, so that's appropriate to be spatial frequency. And now I've got a function that tells me how the electric field is distributed along the x prime variable, because uh, there's x prime. So let me rearrange that a little bit, um, and I can write this looking like a new Gaussian. So I have x prime, and then I have all this junk, uh, which is all these terms gathered up. So this must be my w0 prime. This must be my new waste coordinate. And what that tells me is the size of the new waste is f lambda over pi w naught, the old waste, which is just what we found here. So convincingly, or at least uh, uh, conveniently, uh, if we take the Fourier transform of the field on the front side of the lens, we get the Fourier, we get a distribution of spatial frequencies that relate to this field. We make the substitution so that we know how those spatial frequencies paint themselves along the back of the lens here. And we get, in the case of a Gaussian, a new Gaussian, um, and we accurately predict what the waist size should be. The point is we should be able to do that now for any spatial distribution of electric field at the front of the lens to predict how it focuses at the back of the lens.